Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here, and I'm doing a new movie review this week. It's called Black Mask. It's a story about an infamous Irish-American mobster named James Whitey Bulger. It stars Johnny Depp, Joe Egerton, Benedict Cumberbatch, Dakota Johnson, Kevin Bacon, Jesse Plemons, Corey Stahl, Peter Skarsgård, David Hardberg, Rory Cochran, Julian Nicholson, Adam Scott, Brad Carter, W. Errol Brown, and Juno Temple. It's written by Jess Butterworth and Mark Morlock, and it's directed by Scott Cooper. The movie begins set in South Boston in 1975, follows an Irish-American winter hill game whose leader, James Whitey Bulger, controls almost all of the organized crimes along with his right-hand man Stephen Flemmy, newcomer Kevin Weeks, and a hitman named Johnny Martirano. Bulger's hold over to South Boston is challenged by Northern Angela Brothers, who is the head of the New England Mafia family. It also arrives an FBI agent, John Connolly, to South Boston, which who happens to be his friend and his brother, who is the Massachusetts State Senate President William Billy Broger. Connolly is advanced with the FBI once of pressuring him into attempt to find a way to go after the Angela Brothers, who continues to avoid police detection. Connolly has decided to persuade Billy into getting Whitey to cooperate with the FBI, but refused to give him any notices. So they detest the idea of becoming a rat, but Connolly warns him that the FBI believes that the Angela Brothers are planning to kill him soon. So that pressure alone was, was enough for him to protect both his wife, Lindsay, and his son, Douglas. But after the Angela Brothers brutally kills and murders all of his Winter Hill gang members, much to Fleming's dismay, Whitey became informant. Of course, Collier's control of Wiley questions his boss, Charles McGuire. However, he's also defended by his co-worker, John Morris, who finally follows uh, Connolly's plan. Of course, that's what leads to all the murders that they've been getting. To make matters worse, Wiley's son Douglas had suddenly developed Y syndrome since he had an allergic reaction to aspirin, which unfortunately he was on life support, already considered to be brain dead, and was already ready to be pulled a plug. Yeah, which unfortunately, once he takes him off life support over Whitey's furious objections. That that leads to their relationship breaking off afterwards. This is Conley continues to demand actual information on the Angelos rather than to your locations. While Whitey was able to get all the pictures of the works hideouts, they allowed the FBI to wiretap the Angelos head on. So that's pretty much what they're trying to do to avoid all of this to happen. It's based on a true story um, behind the, the infamous gangster as we know it. And I know um, we already heard about the story about how he's already been found when, when he became an elderly man um, in 2011 in Santa Monica, California at his apartment. Yeah, because he's already been arrested. But I gotta say that this was a pretty interesting film. Um, well worth watching and and I thought Johnny Depp's performance um, really sold the film for me. Um, some of the other actors, like Joe Egerton and all the rest, were okay. Except for Dakota Johnson, though. I thought she was terrible. Um, definitely not the right choice to play uh, Whitey's wife. You know, because I, I, I just didn't like her delivery that she came up with. It just, she just doesn't work for me. But surprisingly, she was only there for like 10 minutes into the film. After that, she disappears, and the rest just went on. But um, there are times when I think they try to rip off some of the other gangster films, like Goodfellas, for instance. Yeah, some of the lines of dialogue that, that Johnny Depp was coming up with almost seemed like it almost ripped off uh, the scene in, in Goodfellas with uh, you know Joe Pesci. You know. Yeah, sort of a threatening scene as we know it. <laughs> But it gets to it. Yeah, it, it was in the scene where um, they were actually um, 
in the dinner table, you know, they were just making all these conversations about Connolly's friend, you know, and colleague who's just, um, who's just talking about um, the secret family recipe and all this other stuff. Yeah, in the mix. I just feel like they sort of borrow that element from that, but you know, either way, it's okay. But once again, Depp did a fine, good performance. I, I hope he gets a nomination someday, but if not, uh, that's okay. Because already, you know, he's saying something about, you know, he doesn't want to win an Oscar. So that's okay. Who knows? I mean, I, I thought he was good in this film with, with using his um, his Boston Irish accent that he was, you know, actually uh, attending to use for the film. Yeah, I, I know sometimes, you know, some actors who have used the Boston accent can sometimes be, you know, quite awful. Other times it could just be, you know, kind of authentic. So maybe they're trying to, you know, because even though they're cast in the film, they try to do whatever they can to, to play the roles uh, straight. So, I know, it, it, it happens sometimes. Um, it was also interesting to see Kevin Bacon in this movie, you know, playing... Uh, Connolly's boss, so that's that's something. And sometimes the killings could be pretty brutal at times. I mean, yeah, you can tell by several of the scenes, you know, where actually people get their head shot and strangled and all of that. I mean, that's pretty much what you'll see in a film like Black Mass. But it's um, it's quite interesting. I think it's a great film. Um, definitely worth watching. And I would recommend it. So anyway, I give Black Mask four stars. I'm Joseph A. Saboro, and I'll see you later. Bye.